Is the bull market dead? Not according to the experts. What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz with you. And uh, this is Saturday, December the 8th, and I'll be off to uh, Vegas this afternoon for my seminar next week. So I wanted to make sure I got the, the my Bubba's Bottom Line out for you this week. And of course, uh, what a week, right? After last week's big trade war truce and the markets exploding higher on, on, on Monday, and then, of course, the rest of the week, we ended up uh, basically falling off a cliff. Of course, we had the day of mourning on, the, on December 5th for uh, 41, George Herbert Walker Bush. And, of course, uh, the markets, although were closed in the pits, uh, electronically were open and they were much higher. But, again, I think as we go back and look at the action, I think your first sign of warning should have been on Monday. Okay, we skyrocketed higher Sunday night into Monday. And at one point, I believe the Dow was up about 600 points. And we ended up closing up about 350 or 400. So that was warning number one, the inability to follow through the overall rally. And so when you when you look at a market, when you look at what's going on within the markets, those are usually signs that are telling that there's there's something wrong. But of course, according to the pundits, the advisors, and all the guys that have no real skin in the game, which to me I find very frustrating as a, as a real trader, as somebody who puts his own money at risk when I talk about the things that are going on in the market, I find it an embarrassment to, to hear what a lot of these say, and we will cover that more in our commentary, but of course, you continue to hear the same message. And, and, I, and I think that this is where it becomes a, a little bit misleading. When you look at the markets, and we have, we have addressed many of these things over the past several months of what are some of the issues. Okay, well, number one issue is that the markets themselves have had a huge run. Now, I'm not telling you that today is the end of the world and we're going down immediately. What I'm saying to you here, and I think if you if you learn to follow the footprint of the market, okay, what kind of phase or position are we in in this market? And I think the phase we are in is what we call wide sweeping consolidation. But this was the first week where we saw the markets hit the top of the range and hit the bottom of the range in the same week. Now, now, by the footprint of the market, we are still in a big, wide-sweeping consolidation. So with all the blood curdling in the street and with all the panic and puking going on, I would venture to say that more than likely we will see some sort of a rip-your-face-off rally next week. I think we'll see some sort of a big pop to the upside, which will probably fail. As you know, we have been in, uh, from the camp over, you know, again, the last couple of months, I guess, is we want to be a seller of the rallies. And the only question is, is how far does the rally have to go to where we're going to sell it? So as we look at the market, I would say that it just in general terms, you could look at 24,000 Dow to 26,000 Dow. And that has been the exact range. And as a matter of fact, we just about hit the top and the bottom end of that range during the week. So when we look at the big picture, okay, understand that you're in big consolidation and we're not going to go straight down. Again, it looks bad, but again, you'll, you will see most likely a huge rally. And, you know, everybody's already talked to me about, well, is this 1987 again? And this, the action was actually very similar to 1987, but 1987 will never happen again the way that that happened because of the circuit breakers and the things that are put into markets to stall. Now, if you've ever wondered to yourself, why do they put circuit breakers in? Why do we have these pauses in the market? And here's the simple answer. The simple fact is, is that 
when markets get crazy and they go straight down, typically, if you can give somebody a rest and shut it down for a few minutes, it usually brings back what we would call cooler heads, calmer heads, and typically that will stop the panicking and the puking. That is the reason for the circuit breakers to slow things down, to give investors and the big firms an opportunity. But this now takes me back to the high frequency trading, which has been, we've been on this topic the last couple of weeks. And, and quite frankly, it, 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 it pisses me off, okay? Because nobody talked about the algorithm trading when the markets were going straight up on Monday. Again, because of course we want the markets to go up. But what we have to remember is that markets will go up year over year. They go up 8%. They just don't go up every year. But I really hate the outrage and the ignorance from people that talk about this like they have a clue because they don't have a clue. As we have said, the biggest difference between today and computerized trading and 30 years ago when it was all market maker trading is the speed at which transactions can be done. So when there's 50,000 people trading, and then there's more, but when there's 50,000 people all selling at the same time, that creates the panic. And of course, selling begets selling and so on and so forth. So I, again, I, I, that'll be more covered in my commentary as well, but I, I'm sick of hearing of, of the nonsense that, that's spewed out there. I, I think that the advisors and, and those that have reasons to have you in because of commissions, okay? It's not that they're so much believers that the market will actually go up, but the only way that they make their money is to have your money working in the market so that they can get their commission. When you're sitting in the, on the sidelines in cash, they are not getting paid. So I think that becomes an issue. But when we look at, at, at some of the big key events during the week, we had the jobs number, okay? Now, the jobs number was another little bit of a miss. Now, again, 155,000 jobs, not so bad. Unemployment rate stayed around the same, 3.7. We did see a, a hike in wages. So what does that mean, okay? Well, the first part is, as many will call this, a potential Goldilocks scenario because it may keep the Fed out. In fact, I think Bullard said yesterday that, well, maybe we shouldn't even hike in December. Now, again, I go back to the same question I will ask you and say, if the economy is doing so well, if we are seeing so much growth, if, 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 why is there a problem with raising rates? And of course, if you were watching on Thursday, you saw the markets make a dramatic recovery. And those of you who get Bubba's Daily Update knew that it was coming because I sent you out a update saying that be careful here. It looks like it's coming. Okay. Now, my, my real answer or real, real statement to you here is very clear. Okay. The Fed has no clue. They are totally worthless when it comes to understanding how the markets function and how things really happen here. So when you hear, when you start to hear them talk, what are they really telling? What is the message that they are sending you when they are talking? It's telling you that they have no idea of what to do next, and they're starting to panic. Remember Billy Ray Valentine? They're panicking out there. I can feel it. Well, that, that's really what you're seeing from the Federal Reserve. They are now trying to manipulate the rates around what the equity market is doing instead of letting the free market system trade. Okay, because one thing we know for a certainty is the free market will price asset classes by themselves because it becomes into the, su the supply demand formula for all of you mathematicians and, 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 and followers. You can say and, and say, OK, so if there's a big demand for money, then interest rates are going to go higher. If there is a not a demand, then interest rates are going higher because the, the, the objective when we look at any marketing plan or any business is banks are selling money. We're buying money. That's really what it comes down to. So what is that money worth? And if the Fed would get the hell out of the way, 
because again, whatever they say is never right. And of course, there was some article in the Wall Street Journal that came out late Thursday that timed right into the big rally uh, that said, well, the Fed is not going to raise as much. Why should the market be so concerned about what the Fed is going to do? Again, I go back to that they have no clue that we need to be on a supply demand formula and let asset classes price themselves. I think that what the Fed has managed to do is to destroy the value of the dollar, make Americans work harder for the same amount of money, even though it sounds like, well, you know, I'm making 150,000, you know, versus I was making 100 10 years ago, but that 150 is nowhere near the 100. Okay. Again, these are just things that that we 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 get this artificial architecture of what's supposed to happen. Then we have the the OPEC situation. And of course, yesterday morning, as we were trading live for the jobs number, oil all of a sudden started to rally. Okay, it started to take off and it was skyrocketing. And I said, during that live call, I go, there's news coming. I don't know what it's going to be. It's got to do with OPEC, I'm sure. And there's news coming and there's news pending. And sure enough, out about an hour later came out the news item. So this goes back to understanding the function and how markets work because we now see that markets work based on what's going on. So you had people, you had those who had, were in the know anticipating the news. And of course, crude oil pushed its way up to 54.22 before closing the day at about 52.10. So I, again, once again, failure. And, and this is what we have to understand. And this is what I want you to understand about the overall markets. Okay. But it looks like at this particular point that Goldilocks, okay, you know, the old Goldilocks economy, which, which I believe was started by our own Larry Kudlow, but I think the Goldilocks economy is dead. Okay. I think you're starting to see that investors and traders and everybody alike is realizing that the Fed is indeed actually clueless and they have no idea how to get out of here because are we in a recession? Is this the start of a recession? Well, it's certainly the start of a bear market. We are certainly looking to go significantly lower. But we'll talk more about this bear market. We'll talk more about the markets and what happened last week when we come back from the break. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. I am Todd Bubba Horwitz and always thank you for being here and sharing some time with me. I want to remind you to if you'd like to get the free book from my friend Adam Barada, uh, who owns Advantage Gold, uh, you can go to uh, you can go to puppetrading.com forward slash gold. And gold is a better way is the name of the book. He's willing to give you a hard copy of that book for free. So make sure you check that out. And in the meantime, if you'd like to help out our high school program, which we're really struggling, uh, you can help us out at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. That's Patreon dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line. And I am Todd Bubba Horwitz. And as I said, always great to be here. And we started to talk a little bit about the bear market and where we are and where we're going to go. Well, to me, I look at the markets, and again, we are still in this big, wide, sweeping range, so it's not confirmed that we're going to totally break down. But I would expect starting in the first quarter, you know, again, from a trading standpoint, we are approaching rapidly. If there is any real time left in this year to trade, it's the, the next two weeks will be the end of it, okay? The 21st will be the end of the year, basically. That's when traders will typically go. But... I believe that you're going to see these vicious rallies. And I think that the, the important part to understand about these vicious rallies when they do show up and they just show up and we call them the rip your face off variety. But when they start to show up now, now that we are in a bear market, and if you don't think we are, take a look at Apple, take a look at Amazon, take a look at the new highs versus new lows every day. Take a look at everything that would affect markets. And you're seeing that there's nothing that is all too positive. So again, we're, I don't want to, I don't want, I do not want you to expect that the markets are going to go straight down. They're going to trade. So what I'm looking for now is that rip your face off rally. And I can see us going as high as 25,000. We, hell, we could go back to the top end of the range and break from there. 
I'm looking and I think you should be looking for opportunities to sell into these rallies, but you want to let the rallies play out. You want to watch the chart and understand when the footprint starts to change, that's when you want to start to look to be a seller. In the meantime, the market's uh, top end of the range, bottom of the range, pretty much across the board. NASDAQ looks really ugly. It has been under just dramatic pressure. In fact, in the last week, I think the NASDAQ has lost about 5% or 6% on its own. The Russell looks weak, which was something that tipped this off. So when you're listening, to everybody try to justify why we're going to go high from here. And again, I'm not saying that life is over, that the markets will never go up. And I'm not saying that I'm 100% right here. But I think you have to understand both sides of the market. And I think we, we've talked about gold extensively for the last you know, couple of months as well. And we have identified, we had, if you remember, we identified gold at 1180 as the low. And the overnight print was 1167. And we said, this looks like it has a chance that it should go to 1240. Then once it got through 1240, it should go now to about 1275. And yesterday it closed at about 1252. So we look like we're solidly in, into seeing gold working its way higher. And that's in the face of the higher dollar. Now, we think the dollar is going higher as well. And I think this is one of the things that is also a problem is people get too tied up in the correlations of different assets. Eventually, they were correlate. But again, if you let markets trade, they are efficient enough to let they will match off themselves. So just because the dollar and grains, the dollar and gold, dollar and oil are all correlated. Does not mean today because gold, because the dollar's at 97, mean that that these other things should go down because maybe these things are priced in to see the dollar at par, which is where we think it's going. The big trade war truce, you know, again, this is not going to change overnight, but I really get frustrated when I continue to hear the experts and the pundits talk about uh, the trade wars. And, and, and I actually did, I filled in for Chip Flory on Market Rally Radio, and I said straight out, I believe the trade wars are nothing. And I got a lot of agreement. Now, again, I'm not saying that I'm 100% right here. But when I look at this trade war, okay, I don't see any major real issues. I see the equity markets, although now in bear territory, okay, they've only come down 10% after going up 300%. So again, is that, am I really worried about that? Okay. I look at the grains. Now, grains have rallied. They had a nice finish to the week as well. And soybeans are back over $9. Wheat's about five thirty, dollars And corn's about three three eighty five. dollars So when I look at those, I go, well, where, where's the trade war problem? So again, I think the trade war is more of a news item. I think it's more about the media and it's more about the politicians, and it's more about um, the lobbyists who benefit. Personally, I don't think it's had as great of an effect on farming and producing, except that if, if we hadn't had bumper crops back to back, especially in soybeans, I think that we would not be talking about this because prices would be higher. I think that you're seeing that China may not be buying direct, but certainly there's a lot of unknown big orders coming in and we know where they're coming from. But there, there is now a competition for to be a supplier because of the amount of supply that's around. Again, this is not we are not in a shortage right now. We are in an overabundance, which is why we're seeing farmers and producers store their grains. Because we're, there's too many. OK, again, if you look at oil, you know, we, we have said even when we were getting puked out on oil, we said that there was too much supply and eventually that would play itself back out. So now technically it finally played out and here we are, okay? Too much supply, there's a glut, so oil is collapsing. Last year, before there was ever, ever a trade war talk, what was we, we did we tell you? We said that there was a problem in soybeans that the, if they could not hold the $10 level, they were going down into eights. What happened? They couldn't hold the $10 level. They went down into Yates. But everybody wants to blame, of course, the trade wars. And of course, that's part of my commentary. So in the more of that later. Uh, but you, you look at the dollar. The dollar looks very strong. It looks like it wants to continue to go higher. The meats had a, 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 a tough week 
but they held major levels, okay? Now, the, my biggest concern in the meats is the feeder cattle right now, but as long as they hold 142.50 or so, I'm gonna still wanna be bullish there. I, I think we, we get over confused, and I think the feeders are probably under a little bit of pressure because of the price of corn and the big rally in corn. But fats look really good, which is live cattle, for those who don't, don't understand fats. And the hogs, February hogs are right up against resistance. So to me, they look really solid. In fact, again, if we go back to what my original thesis is, is we believe that the markets are going to sell off equities, okay, which will then take new money and bring that into the ag, the alternative space. And that's what we're looking for. And I, and I think that works out. Now, the cryptocurrencies have been under dramatic pressure for quite a while, but really the last couple of weeks. This looks like and has all the makings of a potential blow off to the downside. Now, again, let's, re, re, let's reiterate where we stand with cryptos, okay? I own them, okay? I'm a buyer of them. I'm, I'm not, if I lose all my money in the cryptos, I will not have to, I will not miss a meal, okay? I would never want anybody to overinvest here, but the, the theory you're seeing a lot more use of the blockchain, you're seeing a lot more small countries adapt cryptos as their currency. So if you can find the right one, okay, as I said, as my grandma used to say, maybe I'll bet on the crooked horse. If you can find the right couple of cryptos, which is why, if you want to play, and I'm not recommending that you do, but if you want to play, put a few hundred bucks in a couple of different ones and look for basically the lottery ticket because that's really what we want. Because again, the reason that I think you're seeing so much struggle here with the cryptos, this goes back to, again, our friends at the Fed, our friends at central banks around the world. They are trying to figure out a way where they can scam their way through and get their fair share out of that money. So they don't want to uh, have it to be successful. So they're putting undue pressure. But again, I think once again, they do, they are, those are in free markets. You can trade them right now. Okay, they trade 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I think they will be fine. And again, I compare, compare this very much to the internet. I think the move, the collapse happened faster than the internet. But remember, because the internet wasn't around when the internet started, so it took longer. Everything happened, cycles run much faster right now because of the amount of information that we're seeing. And of course, we have our good old friends from OPEC, who I believe now is meaningless. Okay, you talk about OPEC, and it, OPEC used to mean something. You know, remember, we were not always net producers of oil. We were net importers. We, we didn't care because when oil was $15, $16, $14 a barrel, who cared? I mean, when I pumped gas, which I did pump gas in the 70s, I started pumping gas when it was 29 cents a gallon. Okay, you know, obviously now it's over three bucks or two bucks, whatever it is. But in the meantime, OPEC has no real meaning. Why? Because the United States is a net exporter of oil. We can produce all we want. And if you want to continue to argue about price of where we should be going, everybody says the shale producers have to get 60 bucks, 70 bucks. They're getting their loans called in. They're going out of business. I have one question to ask you. Why are they still putting up bricks? Why are they still pumping? If, if, if it's so dire and they have to get so much money, then why are they still putting it out there? Just remember that when you look at the price, because we expect crude to go back to the 40s. And again, I, I'm, I'm right now, we're trading at 49 to 54. Okay, that's where I'm, I'm a seller at 54. I'm a cover at, you know, in the 40s. Okay, but if we get down there and we really start to catch some steam to the downside again, I would not be surprised to see us get into the 30s next year at some point. Again, over time, I expect, you know, if, if, if we ever get rid of big oil, I expect to see oil come down dramatically. OK, uh, I, I think that, you know, Powell's has been sending messages to the market. I think he's wrong. And, and I don't know why he's feels so compelled. You know, he actually came from the private sector and was not in academia his whole life. And I think he's making an error in judgment or he's got an ulterior motive. I'm, I'm not sure. And, and, and I think we also have to learn to interpret the news items that do hit the tape, okay? Because again, I, I think one thing I think that we forget, okay, is that by the time you read the news, by the time you hear the news, 
you are at least the one millionth person to get that information. And I think that's where a lot of us get trapped and make mistakes in how we observe and trade the markets because you should be able to see that market footprint showing up long before the news hits. And I think that's something that, that, that we as individuals make a, a big mistake on. And, and I just think you have to look at what we got going on here. You've got a credit bubble going on. You've got obviously massive amounts of debt. Nobody wants to talk about it. They want to continue to ignore it. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz, we're going to stop out here for our final break and come back with my commentary. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Just remember, uh, gold is a better way from my friend Adam Barada of Advantage Gold. If you'd like to check it out, he'll give you a free copy. All I have to do is go to, go to bubbatrading.com forward slash gold. That's bubbatrading.com forward slash gold. If you'd like to help us out with our high school program, you can go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Bubba Trading. That's Patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now, let's get back to my commentary on Bubba's Bottom Line. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz with my weekly commentary. And, you know, as you may or may not know, I do a lot of media and I'm on air a lot. And I watch a lot when I'm going to be on so that I can get a flavor for what's happening. And, and I got to tell you, I find it so irritating and so depressing to listen to people talk and listen to them try to justify why the markets are going down, okay, and then how they should rally. And, and, and they continue to bring in the same crappy guests that don't trade their own money, that don't have their own skin in the game. They have your skin in the game. I want to hear from people that are actually trading with their own money telling you that, yes, I believe I'm a buyer of this market with my money. I'm not a buyer of this market with your money. And I think they do a dramatic disservice to the casual investor, okay, who's just looking for some advice. Now, again, first thing first, you should be hedged. But if you're not hedged, casual investors should not really watch the market actively. Because again, you have to go back to the theory that the markets go up 8% year over year. You're buying good companies. You shouldn't worry day to day. Although with all this technology, we do. But I think that the media, you know, you talk about fake news. And, and of course, President Trump talks about fake news. I think that the media does a disservice because they continue to try to cheerlead and pump up the markets. And the, the fact of the matter is the markets go up and the markets go down. Eventually, they will go higher. But I think you, you don't want to create, well, is this the buying opportunity? Okay. Well, nobody knows exactly when the buying opportunity. I think this is where a lot of people get themselves into trouble because of the misreporting on high-frequency trading, on algorithm trading. Again, if you understand the algorithm, which nobody on air understands, algorithms are not trying to make $50. Okay. They're making, they want to make a half of a penny. They want to make a fraction of a cent on a lot of trades. High frequency is simply just the old the replacement for the market makers. And then you get into how they discuss the trade wars. Okay. And everybody with the fretting of the brow and the wiping their forehead, oh my God, it's the end of the world. We have these trade wars. What are we going to do? In my opinion, the, all these trade wars talks, all their, their, their fretting on air, all this has done is allowed a lot of the retailers to raise their prices and blame it on tariffs and pass costs on that they have not even seen yet. Now, that's my opinion. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm going to make that as a guess because, again, I've seen this movie before, whether it's through rising commodity costs or through other things. So I think, again, the media does a dramatic disservice. Of course, they need news and they want to get ratings, but I think they do a dramatic disservice to everybody by making this into the story when it's still, at this point, a non-story. Okay? When you even look at the amount of things that are tariffed and the percentage of the tariff in the big scheme of things, it's fractions. But yet, every day you hear the wiping of the brow, the sweating, and oh my God, these tariffs... To me, 
I've said this earlier today, and I've said it repeatedly. The only guys that really right now at this point care about the tariffs are the politicians and the lobbyists that benefit and get all that, that cash in their pocket from screwing the American people, okay? From taking advantage of the middle class. That's what I see when I hear all these stories. And, and I, I think it's a tragedy and it's sad that right now we're worried about the Fed and we're worried about the trade wars when the Fed should be ended and the trade wars are not an issue. And that'll do it for today's Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz, as always, I thank you so much for being here. I hope you'll have a great weekend. You will get Bubba's Daily Updates, and they will be coming from Las Vegas. I'll be doing a seminar there. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks so much. Bubba's Bottom Line. We'll see you on Monday with the update, and next week back with Bubba's Bottom Line. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you later.